Excellent. Okay, excellent. I think I am live. We will start uh, in three minutes. So if you're going to be watching this in the future, just skip ahead three minutes. We'll get into the questions. We're going to talk today Q&A about how to make $1,000 or more. Hopefully you make that. Selling garden plants, questions and answers. So let's just check with a quick, can you guys see me? No, you can see my plants here. Let me change this over. This is why we do a quick three minute prep. Um, can you see me and can you hear me okay? And again, we'll get started at exactly 12 o'clock. Uh, someone said that I'm upside down and backwards. I hope that's not true because I don't know how to fix that. All right. Um, okay. So for the public lives, usually a lot of people sign on, which is great. Um, so a couple announcements. First, I have perk memberships uh, at YouTube, through YouTube. And you can find that in the video description. The perk memberships is a fee that you pay each month. I teach, I do Q&A, do mentoring. It's a smaller group and I do a lot of private events where I will stay online for an hour. I will teach different subjects and it is a perk membership if that's something you'd like to do. It just gives us a nice small chat where I can really answer your questions and help you in your gardens. We are going to just get into how do you make money selling plants. In the video description, I linked the video from last week that prefaced this one. I also put in my other videos for um, making money selling plants. It is possible. So I want to use this time for everybody to kind of support each other in the chat, ask your questions. And first question really is, People are saying, how can I make the thousand dollars? So I just want to be clear and then we'll get to the question. Actually, when you throw out a question, please put um, in, in capitals question and then your question there and I will find it as quickly as I can. Um, if you want to use a super chat to boost your question, that's great. I appreciate that. I will try and get through all the questions. Um, if you see or think I missed your question, repost it because the chat really does fly through. All right, so let's start now. So the biggest question I get is not so much on growing the plants. People do that pretty well, but on how to make money selling the plants. And when I say $1,000, I don't mean you can just grow the plants and you go out Saturday morning and enough people show up for you to sell $1,000 worth of plants. It's going to be, in fairness, going to probably take at least two plant sales at your place and maybe a third doing like a flea market or a church function or something like that. But the whole idea is to advertise a good two weeks, three weeks in advance through your social media or word of mouth that you're going to have your plant yard sale. And then a day or two before you have it, put those signs out in your neighborhood. And if you're in a more isolated place, of course, it's going to be more difficult. When I talk about making $1,000, I lived in a suburban community. There were lots of houses around, so I had lots of traffic. So that's something to keep in mind, is really just kind of advertising that you have your plants, getting enough people to come to your event. And if that's an issue, like if you're in a place that's maybe more isolated, start looking for different um, flea markets and church functions, um, any kind of sale, and you just you know, show up with your table and you set up your plants that way. All right, so let's roll through the questions. I'm going to scroll back up here real quick. And the first question I have is from Michael for anybody to answer. All right. Is full spectrum lighting required for just seed starting my veggies where I will be loving them outdoors before they ever flower fruit? So if you're going to be growing your plants for your plant sale, you don't need, you don't need, let me answer it this way. You don't need specialized grow lights that are blue and red and stuff like that. A basic white shop light works a hundred percent. I recommend 5,000 lumen, four foot shop light. Check out my videos, just go to garden lighting. 
with about a 5100 to 6500 Kelvin rating. Kelvin is the color of light. The white lights cover different spectrums, including green light, which gets reflected back. Your plants don't really use it. It doesn't matter for transplants. A white light that's full spectrum, covers everything, will grow your transplants. I've been doing that for 20 years. You don't have to spend a lot of money. If you get into the specialized lights that still kind of focus on the red and blue light, you get stronger transplants. They grow better, but they're a lot more expensive. Great for flowering and fruiting, like you're saying. But if you're just doing transplants, basic shop lights work. I would recommend, please subscribe, go to my videos, put in grow light stations, grow lights, whatever. You'll find all the information you need. And for 20 years, I've been doing it this way. All right, next question. Let's keep rolling. Judy, question. When should I divide and pot up my herbs? So it's going to vary on different herbs, depending on what you're growing. But if they are getting to the point, you know, where they're an inch tall, they're prob probably pretty much ready to be divided. Sage, for instance, grows differently than oregano or thyme. You know, thyme is pretty indestructible. You can kind of just tear down a root ball and pot them up. You're looking for division when the plants fill up that plant cell. So another way to look at it is, is when you see the root system, no matter what cell you're growing in, a small cell, a big cell, if the roots have filled up that cell, they're coiling at the bottom, that's probably a good time to up pot them. And it's also a good time to divide them and up pot them, but it is gonna vary a little bit based on what you're growing. Michael, love that. You made around 2,000 a year selling starts. I'm glad that's helpful. Um, if you guys are interested and you're just seeing this for the first time, if you go to my seed shop, it's in the video description. We just put out new collections of seeds from Bentleys for herbs, perennial flowers, all kinds of stuff. They're at a discount. It's a great way to get seeds to kind of fuel your plant yard sale. Um, but I am glad that you made 2,000 and it really is gonna vary. The other thing with a plant yard sale is first year, you know, you might spend more money in setup costs and maybe you don't break even, but you can reuse everything that you have. Um, the lights will last 10, 20 years. Um, some of the plastic flats you'll reuse. You'll have to get more cells or containers because you will have sold them. But people will know that you're doing the yard sale and let them know when they come this year, give them a flyer, give them a business card, give them something, you know, have them put your phone number in your phone. It doesn't matter. Give them their, your social media. If you're on social media, like uh, Instagram, it's a great way, or Facebook, to to contact people and saying you're having a plant sale. My, my point, as I ramble, is tell the people this year that you're going to be doing it next year, and they will start to show up. And over time, you're going to get a bigger and bigger following. All right, next question. Let's keep rolling with the questions, and I'll stay on for about an hour. If you're not putting question in front of your comment, I'm not going to see it because there's a lot going on here. Rhett, he is, and I appreciate Rhett being a perk member. Do you think more common plants, beefsteak tomatoes, or more, or more unique varieties are better for selling? So people are always going to want the basics. They're going to want the red beefsteak, and they're going to want the red cherry. They're going to want plain old basil, your herbs. They're going to want bell peppers, uh, sweet banana peppers, usually jalapenos, cucumbers, zucchini, squash. You wanna have those. But then you're also gonna get more advanced gardeners that are looking for things that they can't really find at Home Depot and Lowe's. And by the way, the plant yard sales are successful because Lowe's and Home Depot, where most people go, are just charging stupid prices for plants. I understand maybe paying you know, it's going to be four or five bucks for one tomato transplant. I understand paying that if you're behind or it's a sp specific variety that you want. But also in that same container, they'll put one lettuce in there and they'll try and sell that for four or five dollars. To me, that's criminal. It shouldn't be allowed. So to answer your question, Rhett, you want the standards and maybe you want more of the standards, but you're going to find over time people will love if you have purple basil, lemon basil, lime basil, if you have different colored cherries, the uh, black cherry what I that I sell at my seed shop, um, different kinds of peppers, some of the super hot peppers that I grow, but I don't eat because they're too hot. So 
standards definitely have those but as you kind of create more of the heirloom varieties and different varieties people will buy those too and then like one thing i, I want to say is like the tomato plant the pepper plant the eggplant um the cucumber plant you may be selling them as a single plant for two or three dollars whatever price you come to but if you use like a four pack or a six pack cell and you're growing four lettuce plugs in there or four kale plants i mean kale actually you can sometimes sell for two or three dollars a single plant but spinach um, lettuces sell four plants in a little four cell for two or three bucks and people are going to be really happy certain plants by themselves one plant two three dollars or even more if you want to charge that but other plants really should be sold in packs of four or six like marigolds four pack um, perennial flowers chamomile four pack you know you get the idea so you just kind of think about it also when you're at the sale ask people i'm um, going back to Rhett's question ask people what they would like to buy um, keep a list and you can also buy them and also ask them what they think is fair they'll give you feedback we're talking right now a spring sale early summer you can also inform people that you're going to be doing a plant sale say in august for people to plant their fall gardens where you're in zones where you can have a fall garden a lot of times all the nursery plants are gone all the seed starts are gone at the big box stores and even nurseries so you can make an additional amount of money selling plants for the fall you know middle of august early September or something like that. So there are two times that you can sell them. Of course, you're going to have to grow new plants because they won't last that long. All right. McMillian, question. Where is the best place to get seed trays and pots cheap? Well, <laughs> the Rusted Garden, um, www. Well, you don't need that, but the rustedgarden.com. I sell them. They are very competitive. They are very fair. If you want to buy hundreds or something like that, that's probably the best way to get them at a discount. And you have to go to places um, like Greenhouse Mega Store, something like that. Um, but you do have to buy in bulk. And if you can afford a thousand or a hundred trays and a hundred cells, that's great. And you can use them for the years. So bulk is the best way to do it. We really do sell them at a fair price at my shop. And the seeds are all under $2 a pack. The seed collections might be come down to like a dollar or a dollar fifty a pack depending on if we have a sale going on or not tango just interesting to me red blue lights are now outdated because of re recent science so i don't know what that is i don't disagree with what you're saying and i really find it interesting i'm actually going to look that up the sun is full spectrum the sun gives us all the color of light when you're using white LEDs, it does the same thing. What I try and kind of impress on people is the white shop lights, LEDs, 5,000 lumens, 5,100 Kelvin or higher work. And they're the cheapest way to go about it. If you look over my shoulder, um, I don't know what hand to use, but back there is my grow light stations. I have five tiers, two lights on each tier, and I've been growing like that forever. Um... All right, next question. Anything else? Dottie's mentioning soil blockers. Soil blocking, and again, I'm going to refocus everything back to the plant sale. Soil blocks are great. They are wonderful for greenhouses and where you're not moving your seed starts around a lot. And I would use that. I actually just got a greenhouse. I will do some soil blocking in there. For plants that I'm growing for my use will go out into the garden. When you're doing your sale, Soil blocks aren't going to really work because they're going to fall apart. So you need to have containers. You can use whatever you want. You do have to be able to label them. For labeling, I just go with um, masking tape and a black marker and you label your stuff that way. You don't have to get fancy and put little labels on everything. That becomes an expense and it can be um, really time consuming, especially if you have two or three hundred plants. So, you know, tape and goes right on there. I used to just put Certain things don't need a label, like oregano, thyme, chives, sage, rosemary. You don't have to label those. But when you're getting to tomato plants and you have different varieties, those are the pots you're going to have to label. So masking tape and a pen works best. You're going to need a solid container. So plastic works best. A lot of people don't like to use plastic. 
you know, I'm not sure how to get around it. What I usually say is, in my garden for growing, I do use plastics. In other parts of my life, I greatly reduce plastic use. I don't buy plastic bottles, water bottles. I try and buy aluminum cans. So you kind of swap out where you're decreasing your use of plastics, where you might have to use them in other parts of your life. And that's just a personal choice. People are going to want to have bags or a way to carry the plants. So you can go to your grocery stores. You see that plastic bags are returned. You can use those. Yes, they're plastic, but you're reusing them. You can buy paper bags, which is best because they can that will compost down and break down. But you are going to need supplies for people to collect the plants if you have a big setup going on. And you're going to have to have something for them to carry them in. A lot of people bring their own things. That's great. But they may not. Um, taking cash is one thing. You're also going to have to think about uh, Square, PayPal, any kind of device that will actually just go right onto your phone and you can take credit cards that way. So it's up to you. So you do have to plan that out also. All right, let's look for more questions. Let's go back up here. Um, oh, Tony just asked about soil blocks. So I think I answered that. I think they're great for your personal use. They work well, get them out into your garden. Uh, Morris. Question, aside from plant sales events, have you had success selling on Facebook Marketplace or other sites where customer orders are one at a time over longer period of time? So I do have a seed and garden shop. That's all I really have. I used to have it on Facebook. I found Facebook to be a little bit um, clumsy to use. So I basically get sales for people going to my website and that's what I promote. If you are talking about, you know, Facebook market for your vicinity, yes, that does work. I was able, and what I did was go to Facebook, find Facebook uh, groups that are local to your area, and you can advertise one that you're going to have a plant sale. And then you can also set up something that you are selling plants and you can put the orders together. People can come to you or you can drop them off depending on how you want to do it. But that is a good strategy to use uh, local social media sources like Facebook to find groups in your area. The other tip that I have, which um, somebody shared with me years ago, is there's a lot of community gardens usually in, a, in our area. So if you get connected with the community garden chats, you can tell people you have plants for sale or you can bring plants there and sell them. You, you got to check that out to make sure it's okay. But these are just options. Like you should be in a, you know, back of your head always thinking, where could I do a sale? Where could I do a sale? And you want to do sales in a way that you can load all your plants into your vehicle, get there, set up without a lot of work, um, at least in the beginning, because you'll find that if this is successful, you're going to have so many plants, you're going to need a truck to haul stuff around. Um, but just, you know, think about it. All right. And remember, make sure you put question in front of it. Jolene, do you have your compost tomato seeds up for sale? They, uh, those for people that don't know, I've had this variety of tomato growing out of my compost um, for years. And it's just an amazing tomato plant. They are on the way to my brother who helps me manage the shop in New York. They will be up soon. Um, Jolene is a perk member. So in the community tab on YouTube for the perk members, I will let you all know when those seeds are up and ready. All right, Megan, question. How do you deal with splitting four packs? So four packs, well, a couple of things. I'm just trying to think about your question. I used to cut cells into pieces. So, you know, if it was say a four pack of tomatoes you were growing and they were maybe in a bigger container, in a, in a bigger four cell where maybe it looks something like this or whatever, I would cut it in half or something like that. Maybe cell two or cell one. Um, if that's what you're asking, you know, the plastic six cells, four cells, I sell them in all different sizes at my shop, plus two and a half inch containers three and a half inch round pots. Depending on what you're selling, I would leave them as a four, I would leave them as a six, or I would use scissors just to cut them into pieces and sell them that way. 
And um, Megan, if I didn't answer your question, if you want to give me more detail, that would be fine. Rebecca, I just saw you had a question. Uh oh, did I lose it? Hang on. All right, Rebecca, question. Any ideas about modular trays? I've seen this one on um, Charles uh, Rowling, or maybe that's Dowding's channel. Any advantage? Modular tray, um, I'm having a hard time picturing what you mean. Um, modular trays, are you saying where they are just like it's a 72 cell built in the tray? You just grow on that and then you pop them out. Um, if that's what you mean, I've used them before. They work fine. You don't have a lot of soil space. So you're really moving those transplants quickly out into your garden or into up potting. If you mean something else by modular, I'm sorry. I, I can't picture exactly what you're asking. Tom, I would say he's wrong about science outdated as in Apogee now meters. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, you guys outdated or whatever. There's a couple of things. There's like um, with the white shop lights, it's lumens. A lot of people say lumens are for humans. That's fine. But brightness does matter to a plant. You know, if you only have one lumen, it doesn't matter what kind of light you're using. The plant's not going to have enough light. So brightness does matter. The daylight co color at Kelvin, when you're using the white lights, the brighter the lumen, the brighter the white lights, the higher the lumen, the closer you are to 6,500 Kelvin, you're getting all the colors in the spectrum. When you go to um, the red lights and the blue lights and other specialized LEDs, they talk about par value, which has something to do with um, what the plants actually absorb, some sort of radiation. All those things are true. All I'm saying and what a lot of people are saying is the white lights do work for transplants. The other lights you may need specialized more for growing flowers and for fruiting. And that's important because there is a cost. Like if we're growing for the plant sale, you're going to have to be growing your transplants somewhere and starting them indoors is what most people do. Remember when you're doing your plant sale, you're growing them inside and then you're going to have to put them outside slowly over a week's time to make sure they acclimate to the sun. If not, you're going to kill off all your plants where you've spent all this time growing them indoors. So acclimation is really important. Um, in a second, I will talk about planning a little bit. Tanya, how sturdy are your cell trays at your shop? The six cells, the four cells, I mean, they're pretty sturdy. They're standard. They're not super thick. That's why they're not expensive. You can reuse them. The actual flats they go into are a thicker quality. Um, but if you're looking for like, you know, you've seen some of these, some people are selling stuff you can stand on and they don't break or collapse. It's not those. These are just kind of your standard flats upgraded a little bit so they're nice and thick and they're not flimsy and they don't crack. And then the cells themselves are kind of just standard cells. All right. Uh, Dog82, if selling plants for first year, should I use my best soil mix for them or basic is fine? You want to start your seeds in a good quality starting mix um, so that you get your transplants growing. When I would up pot them for the sale, I would get any kind of garden soil or potting mix on sale at the big box stores. Nowadays I do make it. I do like 50% peat, 50% just plain old earth from my yard throw in some compost, I make my own potting mix. You don't have to use anything fancy for the up potting. You just want something that, you know, is pretty good, holds water, will let the plant grow, but they're getting moved, you know, from when you sell them into somebody's garden pretty quickly. So you don't have to overspend on the up potting. All right, let's see. Tom, best advice for beets and onions. Thanks. Best advice for the variety or growing? You know, uh, beets, I like standard Detroit. I do some different beets, um, but they grow best. If you were going to be selling beets, typically people don't um, 
sell them individually, but they would definitely be in a six pack and I might just do two bucks for those, but beets are best just planted directly into the garden in my opinion. Onions are cool because you can get a cup, maybe something like this, put in you know, 15, 20, 30 seeds, grow the transplants in there and you can sell that for three bucks. And what you explain to people is, you know, they've been growing eight weeks. What you can do is dump them out, break them apart. You get all these individual onions and then they just plant them in a garden. I don't know, you know, three to four inches apart. So onions and leeks, I usually grow in a bigger, wider container, 15, 20, even 25 seed. You just want to give them a lot of onions. They're not expensive and then you could sell them that way. As for an onion variety, that all depends on what zone you're in, so I don't wanna get into that. And not uh, growing zone, or not coldness, hardiness zone, but actually onion growing zones. Onions are based on short days, intermediate days, and long days. But onions I like. Onions and leeks, definitely in a cup. All right, let me find out where we're at here with the questions. All right, Jeff, I think I answered your question about onions. J. Bay. Uh, hey, Gary, I'm preparing my soil and found a couple grubs in the dirt here and there. Should I? Outside, there's grubs everywhere. Most of them don't bother our plants. I wouldn't do a drench unless you learn that grub created some sort of insect that was, you know, damaging your garden. I have grubs everywhere from Japanese beetles and other things. Some grubs actually turn into insects that are helpful to your garden, so I wouldn't over worry about it. Homer, been growing lettuce in my bedroom in a rack with grow lights hydroponically, but my lettuce is now wilting after a month. Was doing fine, now I'm a bit disappointed. So I don't know, I don't grow hydroponically. Um, I just, I can't answer it. I would need to know more what's going on. Sorry. Victoria, what do you think about selling a 10 inch round mix of cut grow lettuce bowl? Um, I think that's a good idea. I don't know what I would sell it out. You know, you might make more selling, you know, a four pack of lettuce at $3. I mean, you would, I would start, you know, maybe six or eight dollars if they sell fast, raise the price to eight to 10. If they sell fast, raise it to 10 to 12. That's sort of how I learned how to price my stuff. Is start with something lower than you might want to. You have to see if people are interested because you also want to know that you have somebody to buy it. So if you did like 20 of those 10 inch round things and nobody wanted them, that's a lot to take care of. The other way to think about it for selling is to have your 10 inch pot your plants, sell the pot separately and sh do a display on how they can buy the pot, maybe get some soil from you, set up their own 10 inch bowl. And that ends up being sometimes better for you as a seller than putting it all together and having to water it and tend it and, and move them around. Leslie, the best way to reduce soil cost is to make your own. Now, peat moss bales have gone up. If you don't want to use peat moss, you could use cocoa core. If you don't want to use cocoa core, I'm not sure what you can use, but you need materials to make your soil. Buying now, I saw it was like 20 bucks for a three cubic foot bale of peat moss. Take, buying that for 25 bucks, let's say, using some of your earth from your area. If you don't have that, just basic cheap topsoil or garden soil, blend that together, 50% peat or core, 50% earth. It makes a really nice potting up mix and that's the cheapest way you can do it. You can also look for truckloads to be dumped to your house, but that's kind of expensive and that's a lot. But the cheapest way to make it is to make it using peat and cocoa core, 50% and then 50% of earth from your yard or from you know, the big box stores and buying the cheaper bag products. Basically, just so you know, and if you want to subscribe and follow me, I have plenty of videos on breaking down the different bag products. But when you see a bag of just topsoil, and then you go to premium topsoil, then you go to garden soil, then you go to raised bed soil, then you go to potting mix, 
It's just the addition of peat moss, more and more peat moss in each of those bags that increases the price and makes the quality look better. So buy the peat moss and make it yourself. All right, so let's take a pause on the questions there. We're at 1227, we'll keep going. A little bit about planning. So when you're growing for a plant sale, you're not really planning on your last frost date. You're picking a date. And some of the people that buy plants will have to hold them or take care of them or put them in your garden and you know manage them if a frost comes. You're picking for your sell date. So pick your sell date, and let's just say it's May 1st, 10 to 12 weeks backwards for perennial plants, your slower growing perennial herbs. Eight to 10 weeks back for super hots and then peppers, maybe eggplant or something like that. Six to eight weeks for tomatoes, tomatillos. Four to six weeks for your warm weather crops, zucchini, squash, um, cucumbers, etc. That's the general time frame to include planting, germinating, growing, and acclimating so that you have plants that are viable for your sale. If you're able to, I kind of liked doing my plant sale big on a Saturday and Sunday, and then I did it again the following Saturday because the plants that didn't sell were sitting outside, they were getting bigger, and it was a way to kind of bring more income in. So yes, this is work. And when you decide about pricing, price them at whatever you wish, but you know, you want to make sure the plants move. Um, you could do an early sale. Maybe on Saturday, everything is $2. Everything after that, the plants are going to be $3. If costs are more, maybe you're selling them for $3.50. But if you're getting up to that $4, $5 range, then you're not really undercutting the big box stores. And you have to ask yourself a question, why would people want to come to me? You're creating you know, the standard plants that everybody wants. You're creating variety plants that are hard to find and you're creating quality price. And you know, that's up to you on however you wanna do your business plan. All right, checking for questions. Um, Tom, dill, dill is great to actually sell by itself just as a single two or $3 plant. Uh, dye. I have two four foot LEDs, 6,500 lumens, strip lights. Is that enough for tomatoes and cucumbers? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. I mean, your Kelvin rating, you want to, usually LED lights are, if they're white and bright, they're 6,500 Kelvin anyway. So you're probably fine. If they're a little more yellow or dim. The Kelvin value goes down, but those should be fine for starting your tomatoes and cucumbers. Jen, the question is just one week. I don't know what that referencing, maybe when I was talking about acclimation. Acclimation, you want it to at least be seven days. But when I was doing it, I was trying to get my plants out two weeks ahead of time. It took some work to move them in and out of the garage in different places if a cold was coming. But I liked that they were hardened off. The sunshine made them grow really big and they were good to go. It all depends on the timing of your plant sale and what your temperatures are like, you know. If for me, if I was trying to do it end of April, I'd have a hard time keeping my plants out for two weeks and getting them the size. If I was doing my plant sale April or I'm sorry, May 15th, my warm weather is rolled in and I'm going to have really large plants. So picking the time is really important too. Um, you know, it, it's just going to vary place to place. Um, me O'Brien. Can you suggest a red slicer tomato for a sale? I have Bonnie Best seeds on hand, brandy wines, but wondering if I should look for something else that would be more well known. So I like the homestead variety. Um, you got plants that I sell those seeds. I like Bonnie's Best. Uh, there's not really a well known slicer. It's like the big beef steak people use as a slicer. So that's pretty standard and that really kind of covers it. So maybe. Did I see beefsteak in there? I would just maybe add in the red beefsteak. That's just what people, you know, are used to hearing and that's what they kind of like and go to. Tom says, question, I agree you're right 
uh, on lights beneficial clo closer to 6500 Kelvin. Getting your max. Oh, <laughs> that was not DIL. <laughs> that was DLI. Um, I was referring to the dude that said red and blue lights was beneficial. All right. So I thought you meant DIL. Uh, I'll pause for five seconds. The microphone is on, you know, just in case it's a big problem. Someone let me know you can hear me and I'll continue. While I'm waiting, I'm going to just find the questions here. All right, so we will proceed. It looks like I can be heard. Um, Michael, what would you say is a typical variance when plants sprout? For example, I started 100 onions on 2.5 and about 20 have sprouted at different times. So my onions generally sprout within three or four days of each other. So if they haven't sprouted, it might be a concern and maybe I would plant some more again. I mean, they should all come up within, I mean, at most a seven day period. Laura, I have not had good luck with uh, seed starting soil. What is your best suggestion? I make mine a lot. I have plenty of videos on that if you want to go to seed starting mix. Um, most importantly, I've used just basic Jiffy mix, which you see everywhere, where that can be expensive because now I think it's like seven or eight bucks a bag. But make sure you hydrate your seed starting mixes with boiling water. You want to kill off any fungus net eggs that sit in there and they just show up in mixes. So that's most important. But I use Jiffy Mix or I make mine and I have videos on that. Uh, Leslie, can we grow two tiny Tims in a five inch round pot? Not for sale for me. Um, I think you could. I mean, they're going to need outdoors for size if you're growing a tiny tim they're going to really need at least a gallon of earth for each of them they do get big you can plant them in smaller containers they're just going to stay a little bit smaller but most importantly is you got to stay up on the watering so you know i might try like a five gallon pot and i would put in two or three tiny tims if you want to push it and just if, if you want to push it at three and just keep it well watered Matthew, when should I start tomato seeds indoors? Um, 7B, Alabama. Even though we're in similar zones, they're different. But what I recommend, if these are going into your garden, about six weeks before your soil is about 50 or 60 degrees. And I have a lot of videos on timing too if you want to check out my channel. But six weeks of growth is plenty for a tomato. Um, up to eight weeks you just want to make sure they're being moved into the garden when your garden soil is staying, the top four to six inches, is staying at about 50 or 60 degrees. Megan, do you sell any onions individually? At the plant sale, I sell onions um, in you know, a larger container. And like I said, 15, 20, 25 seeds in there and they buy them and they're their seed starts. They dump it out. They break the onions into pieces, into singles, and then they plant the onions that way. Thank you, uh, Urban, for the plug. Um, Ryan, do you need to harden off plants if you start indoor, indoors, but then move to a greenhouse? So if they're indoors and they've been growing for weeks, they're not used to the UV ray of the sun, they're not used to wind, they're not used to cold fluctuation. If you take them into a greenhouse and your greenhouse actually blocks UV rays, then you're probably okay. But you have to make sure that's gonna happen. If not, even though it might be not direct sunlight, the UV rays are still getting through and they can harm your plant. Not as bad as if you just set them out by themselves, but I would still do a little acclimation just to be safe. Morris, for rare varieties of tomatoes and peppers, is it acceptable to charge a few bucks more? Yeah, you can do that. You know, you could, um, so like for instance, if you're growing the super hot peppers, they tend to grow more slowly. They take more time. So adding in a couple of bucks is fine for those. 
All right, we'll keep going. I have time. And again, you know, this is a public live. I enjoy doing these. If <laughs> you're watching these, sometimes I have people that follow me and you're like, the, the public lives are, are too long. You're answering questions. You're pausing. You're reading. We don't like that. And all I can say is the Q&As are a little bit different. So if they're not your cup of tea, just skip those and then just go to my other videos that are sometimes three, four minutes long, short and to the point. If you like this format, you'd like to have sort of a garden mentor, I do um, ask you to consider using perk memberships through YouTube. You can find it in my video description or on my channel. And I have a lot set up where I do teaching and we do classrooms. And it's just like this, except, you know, it might only be 15 or 20 people on. And it's a lot more slower paced and I can really spend more time answering your questions. Uh, country living. Is there anything specific that I should add to my soil for seed starting? Starting some inside, some winter sowing using organic potting mix, compost, and perlite. So when I seed start, my soil is generally just sterilized. There's nothing in there. You don't need soil life. You don't necessarily need fertilizer. I do add in worm castings. That is a great addition. After I sterilize my starting mix, it cools. I put in a couple handfuls of worm castings. That works really well. When seeds germinate, they live off of their seed coat and that gives them the fertilizer they need. But maybe like a week after growing, 10 days, I use just a very dilute water-soluble fertilizer. Anything you want to use is fine. If you use fish emulsion and such inside, it's going to stink. I don't mind using the chemical fertilizers inside. But the whole goal is to dilute the water soluble down to like a 111 NP and K and you just lightly keep watering your plants and that really does work with the water soluble fertilizer. If you over fertilize plants, you'll kill them. And when you over fertilize plants, sometimes they look like you're under fertilizing them. And then we worry and we give them more. So if you use a very dilute water soluble, if your plant yellows a little bit, you can be like, okay, I didn't give them enough. You can give them a little bit more. So slow and steady with the water soluble. Megan, thoughts on selling theme pack? I think that's a great idea. Um, we actually have at the shop now, one of our seed collections is um, a tea pack for tea gardens and stuff like that, herb gardens. We may even do a salsa pack. We don't have those yet, but that's a good way to do it too. So that would be like, you know, for salsa pack, you might have like some cilantro, your tomatoes, your jalapenos, and whatever else for, for making the salsa, maybe even some onions or something like that. If not onions, you could substitute it with chives, and that's a great way to do things. And by making sort of, the, by growing the individual plants for theme packs, if the theme doesn't sell, you still have them as individuals, and they're gonna sell a different way too. All right, buzzing through here. Um, too spooked. This may sound silly, but the days to harvest on seed packets, is that from germination or t transplanting? So it is both. When you put a seed in the ground, they can sit in the cold. So it's definitely not from when you put the seed down. When you When they germinate, even though they germinate, if the temperatures aren't right, it's going to take longer. So that information sort of fools us a little bit. You have to put the seed in the ground to germinate into the right temperature, and you have to put your transplant into the ground when the soil is the right temperature for them to speed up. But it's usually from actual germination, or they really count it from when you put that transplant in. Kaylee, I will be, I, so I just got a greenhouse from Costco. I'm not affiliated with them. It was $1,400, a bit of an outlay, but it's beautiful. If I had to buy all the parts separate, material separate, I couldn't build it for that. So I'm very excited. I'm going to have my first greenhouse and I will be doing some sort of build video. I will be growing in it. So the greenhouse will become part of the rusted garden for this year. And no, it's not online. You can only find it at the Costco's when you walk in. Um, I saw this and again, if you guys are doing questions, you got to put question in Boulder. I'm not going to see it, but I saw arches. Where do you advertise the, the seedling sale? So my plant sale 
as a yard sale, I just put signs out like two days before in my neighborhood at all the main entrances so people see that it's going on. I also would use Facebook, local Facebook um, uh, groups that are local to my area, um, any kind of social media platform. You know, just word of mouth and putting up signs makes a, a difference. Um, and you do have to put the signage out, especially for the plant sale. That tends to work really well. Your first sale, you may not get a ton of people, but I was saying earlier, talk to the people. Say you're going to be doing it every year. Maybe have an Instagram profile made or a Facebook profile made so you can give people information and they can start finding you for when you have the sales. Brian, is there anything I need to look for when going to a pool supply store to buy vermiculite or is it the same size particles? You want very fine particles. There's different uh, levels, but very fine. And just a tip, Uline, U-L-I-N-E, sells packing materials. Packing companies often sell vermiculite and you want the fine quality and it's usually cheaper that way. Anytime you go to a garden center to buy perlite, vermiculite, it costs you sometimes twice as much because they got you. You know, you're going to look for it. It's in a garden center. They jack up the price. So you can look in different places. Nina, are onions frost tolerant? I have a bag of onions sprouting and don't want to, to uh, waste them. They are frost tolerant. I mean, if you have onions that are sprouting, onions are actually biennials. So when you plant them, they're probably not going to grow new big onion bulbs. They're going to just send up a stalk and flower and try and produce seed. Onions are best started from seed or from um, you know little transplants that you grew that year. If they were already a year old, when you put onions out, they tend to flower. They don't bulb up into a nice onion. However, they're going to grow a lot of greens, so you could put them in your garden now, let them do their thing, and you just cut the onion greens. I use those in salads all the time. Um, Mi O'Brien, any suggestion about how to set up tables to sell plants in a driveway so people can see them? Table shelves. So I actually like, I just put them on the edge of my driveway and I just dropped the flats on the edge of the driveway. So people could walk up the center of the driveway and kind of look at the plants. Up towards the top, up near my house, I did have tables set up for some more of the specific, you know, unique varieties um, for herbs actually. So it kind of looked a little bit different, but I would set it up so there's a lot of walking room in the middle, whether you use tables or you just drop the trays on the ground. This way people aren't tripping over things. Um, but keep them out to the side and then keep the center well open. Dottie, at your plant sale, did you put out pictures, growing info on your table? Um, I did actually. I had a poster board with the actual seed packets taped to it so people could visually see what they were buying. And that was the easiest way to do it, you know, when I did this, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, you don't have to overthink it. So if you want to create something um, on a fly, uh, on a piece of paper printed out that has basic growing instructions, I would do that so that people can just, you can just give them the sheet of paper that has basic growing instructions, but it can also have your name on it. It can have your social media on it and it'll be a way for them to stay connected to you. But that is helpful too. Um, the other thing now is I also had would suggest I didn't have because I haven't done it recently. I, you know, I set this up last year or two years ago and I grew everything. I was doing a whole series on it. COVID came in, so I never got to sell it, but I had stuff bookmarked on my iPad. So if people had questions, I could just find pictures and show them, you know, what they were growing. So Jay Fun, can you give a few tips on growing Romanesco? So again, I'm blanking on what that is. Is that the uh, funky looking cauliflower? Um, if it is, I think it would. You would definitely need a picture. People won't totally understand it. Um, but I'm not sure how to sell it, you know, in a four pack or not. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Sweet leaf. I want to sell hot pepper starts. Do you think it's a good idea like super hots? Yeah, people love 
um, hot peppers. And maybe you, maybe when you're doing your yard sale and you're planning on doing this, you are thinking of specializing. And maybe super hots is something you specialize in. And a little bit earlier, we were saying with the slower growing super hots, you could, you know, maybe even charge a little bit more. All right, so we are approaching one o'clock. I will stay on for another 13 minutes. Hope you guys found this useful. And for public, so a couple of things. Every Thursday, every other Thursday, two Thursdays a month, 11 o'clock, I do Garden Grounds. It's a public live, just like this. I have a topic or two, and then I answer questions. So that's one way to do it. If you like this format for learning, you want something smaller, I have perk memberships through YouTube. Check out the video description. If you're just seeing this video in a replay, check out the video description. It goes over my, it has all my past videos on how do you set up and grow for a plant yard sale. So I think that would be helpful. Uh, Bev, do you need specific seller permits to sell plants at home? Uh, yes and no. So in the video, I do talk about this. You have to, every county, city, state has different rules. Some of them are so stupid. I hate government bureaucracy. Some people say you need a nursing, uh, <laughs> nursing license. You need a nursery license. Um, some places want you to have a sales tax ID so that you pay your taxes. Um, so you have to look locally, city level, county level, and see what they require you know if you're doing a yard sale no one really bothers you for a yard sale but if you're starting to go to flea markets in different places it's possible you have a tax collecting guy whatever that position is called and they're going to say can you show me your sales tax license so that's always a good idea to have a sales tax id you can just look online in your local area i think you can do it almost instantly and you're registered but it does vary you know place to place and some places just leave you alone you do whatever you want other places i think florida are like well if you're selling a plant you need a nursery nursery license which is ridiculous me o'brien can you have a video soon on how to plant a community garden plot um are you you well, a couple of things. How do you plan? Like if you're going to build a community garden for everybody, that's one thing. I am going to be starting a video on creating um, garden neighborhoods. That will be coming out. I'll talk more about that in the future. But for planning a community plot, like if you have your own little plot, I would just use the videos that I've already done for my garden because it's basically the same thing. Valley, how much land area do you devote to this venture um so my old property when i used to do this the backyard was like a tenth of an acre and i grew everything indoors took it out to my deck i let things harden off in there and then i set out picnic tables um, and benches that were maybe 20 feet wide and i set my flats in there to grow the plants and then I would just take those out front for the sale. So you don't need a lot of space. I mean, that is a lot of space, but you don't need like a quarter acre or anything like that. My garden here, I have two acres. That's all for gardening. But for the plant sale, you need to have your growing station indoors. You need a place to be able to move them outdoors. And then once they're acclimated, when you're acclimating plants, you want to keep them close to the house so you can bring them in and out. Once they're acclimated, you want a place for them to sit where it's easy for you to keep an eye on them, water them, and then they're all going to go to your plant sale from there. All right, we still have 10 more minutes. Rebecca, what is the easiest way to harden off your vegetable seedlings before planting them in raised beds if you're working four or five days? So the easiest way to really do it is to take your plants out when you're home while they're growing indoors. So like they germinate. Um, you got time, you put them outside for 20 or 30 minutes when they're little, you bring them back in. Maybe next week, they're a little bit taller, an inch tall, you take them outside for 20 or 30 minutes. You can acclimate your plants while they're growing over that six or eight, 10 weeks in your house. There's always a risk maybe you bring in some insects that way. Otherwise, I would put your plants on a north, north side of your house, 
what would it be northeast side of your house yeah where they were only going to get morning sun so you put your flats where they're getting morning sun they're getting some of the uv rays the sun moves on to the south and west and then they sit in the shade so you can strategically place your seed starts where there's morning sun and then the intense afternoon sun is gone they just get shade and that's the way a lot of people do that if they have to uh, work which most of us do All right, I'm going to stay on to twelve uh, to one o'clock. Any questions on gardening or anything like that? That's not on the seed selling or on the plant sale side. Um, be glad to answer those this Thursday at eleven o'clock, live public. It'll be um, garden grounds. Um, I forget what the topic is. Um, but it's a short presentation on the topic, and then we'll have this kind of discussion for whatever you might be doing in your gardens. You're very welcome, Rebecca. New York is crazy. My brother lives in New York, referring to dreaming. And, you know, <laughs> as I get older, it really seems that government bureaucracy bureaucracy is really to keep us from having a chance at making a buck. You know, there's lots of good parts of government. There's lots of bad parts of government, but all government can be shrunk down. Uh, Jonah, if the grubs are wrecking your garden, that's one thing. If your grubs are there and not harming your garden, that's the other thing. Beneficial nematodes work. Milky spore works. Um... I would only worry if they are damaging your garden, and some of them do. You can do a neem oil drench, which I've done. I'm not 100% sure how well it would do with grubs, but it worked for wireworms when I had an issue with that. Sweet leaf, horseradish can stay in the ground over winter. Mine did. I'm in Maryland zone seven. Top inch of the ground freezes. Was just out there uh, yesterday. The horseradish is already sprouting back. Uh, pea seeds. I like to. I have a short. Um, it's actually a, a YouTube short on peas. I like to now pre-sprout my peas inside, and they sprout in two days. I directly plant them outdoors. That helps speed up the germination. When the ground is a little bit cold, pea seeds can rot. But I also have started them indoors, and if I start them indoors, I wait till they break the surface, and then within like four or five days, I want to get them outside because you don't want the peas growing long indoors. They just don't have to. All right, five minutes left. What else? What do you think about higher prices for rare varieties of tomatoes or peppers? Yeah, you could add in a couple of bucks for rare varieties. Val, I have a heck of a time growing onions. Seems simple enough. Any ideas? Um, let your soil dry out. A lot of times onion seeds rot because people keep the soil too wet. Leslie, is your weather humid all summer or do you dry out for some time? No, it's humid. It's pretty much humid June through August here. Victoria, I'm having problems finding things to grow in five gallon buckets that do well. Any suggestions? Um, determinate variety to me. Determinate variety tomatoes, the ones that get to a set height, do really well. You can definitely grow two peppers per five-gallon bucket. They're going to do really well. Um, aside from that, you know, maybe create an herb bucket. But when you get to cucumber, squash, zucchini, and all that, they just have massive root systems and can really suck the water and life out of the soil pretty quickly when you're just dealing with five gallons. Me O'Brien, curious if it makes sense to try selling a four or six-pack of beans or peas. Yes. You know, if you're doing it, I would do the four or six pack and I might just charge, you know, two or three bucks for that. Debbie, do I need the plastic covers over the LED bulbs? No, I've taken some off. You don't need them. I mean, it's good protection if you're splashing water around just for safety, but you don't necessarily need them. Some of them are clear. If they're clear, I wouldn't worry about it. Some of them are a little bit frosted. If you remove them, you're going to get a little more uh, lumens value out of them. All right, three minutes left. Question. I started onions indoors in a disposable tray like your video a few weeks ago. 
when should I trim them and when should I put them outside into beds? You're in Tennessee. So I don't really necessarily trim them unless they get really tall, um, but trimming them helps allow the roots to establish outside. So if I was gonna trim it, I would just trim them when they're going outside. After germination, about six or eight weeks now, I'm recommending getting onions outside. In Tennessee, you know, my son lives out there, you could, you're probably ready to go. Six or eight weeks growth indoors, maybe trim it a couple of days before they go outside and then get them outside. Tom, question, you're a legend, thank you. All right, not a, a question, but I'll take that. Um, all right, well, yeah, so again, future, if you're catching me, if you put the word question, that's the best way to do it, but I see in caps, what's the best way to avoid squash vine borers? The best way to avoid that is to know that you're gonna have losses, and you wanna plant your squash in, let's just say May, you let it grow. The vine borer has a life cycle. It may kill that plant out. You have backup plants. You put out more squash in June, and then you put more squash out in July, and then you put more squash out in August. Squash can take 35 to 40 days to mature. So you're actually planting through the life cycle of the vine borer. So yes, you get some losses, but you have other plants ready to go in, and that's the best way to deal with the vine borer. Now, at the stem, if you wanna put a chemical dust, organic, not organic, whatever you want, that can work too, the, the powdery dust, the grub will crawl on there, could die off. Um, that's a personal choice, but there's no clear way to totally avoid the vine borer. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this public chat. I am going to try and attach maybe public chats like this to a specific video topic, just like you know a plant yard sale. So if you liked it, please like the video for sure. Please leave a actual comment, um, not just in the chat, but in the comment that this is worthwhile. I will see you guys next time. This Thursday, 11 o'clock, I'm doing Gardening Grounds. It's a public live. Well, answer your questions. Thanks so much. Good luck at your plant sale.